Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror. Which paralyzes needed effort to convert retreat into advance. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many foes, and the end is not yet. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction to supplement the growing power of our armed forces. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. In the councils of government, we must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic process. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Who say that it's true that communism is an evil system, but it permits us to make economic progress. Lot Z knock Berlin in common. Let them citizens of Berlin, and therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner.
There is no moral issue. It is wrong, deadly wrong, to deny any of your fellow Americans the right to vote in this country. To know war is to know that there is still madness in this world. There are poor to be lifted up, and there are cities to be built, and there's a world to be helped. Yet, we do what we must. I am hopeful, and I will try with best I can with everything I've got to end this battle and to return our sons to their desires. Yet, as long as others will challenge America's security and test the dearness of our beliefs with fire and steel, then we must stand or see the promise of two centuries coming. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly, somewhere I read
what we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or whether they be black. Throughout the long and difficult period of Watergate, I have felt it was my duty to persevere, to make every possible effort to complete the term of office to which you elected me. In the past few days, however, it has become evident to me that I no longer have a strong enough political base in the Congress to justify continuing that effort. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Today is a day for mourning and remembrance. Nancy and I have been to the core of the tragedy of the shuttle challenge. We know we share this pain with all the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7s, were aware of the danger. They were came in and did their job brilliantly. We mourn seven years. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live couple of shuttles take off. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew is pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to fight. There is one sign the Soviets can make that would be unmistakable that would advance dramatically, dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. These attacks continue as I speak. Ground forces are not engaged. This conflict started August 2nd when the dictator of Iraq invaded a small and helpless neighbor. Kuwait, a member of the Arab League, member of the United Nations was crushed. Its people brutalized. Five months ago, Saddam Hussein started this cruel war against Kuwait. Tonight, the battle has been won. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, honored guests, my fellow Americans, we are fortunate to be alive at this moment in history. Never before has our nation enjoyed at once so much prosperity and social progress with so little internal crisis and so few external threats. Never before have we had such a blessed opportunity and therefore such a profound obligation to build the more perfect union We began the new century with over 20 million new jobs, the fastest economic growth in more than 30 years, the lowest unemployment rates in 30 years, the lowest poverty rates in 20 years, the lowest African-American and Hispanic unemployment rates on record, the first back-to-back -back surpluses in 42 years, and next month America will achieve the longest period of economic growth in our entire history. Good evening. Just moments ago, I spoke with George W. Bush and congratulated him on becoming the 43rd president of the United States. And I promised him that I wouldn't call him back. Now the U.S. Supreme Court has spoken. 
let there be no doubt.